John Coleman believes there is no significant man-made global warming, and he travels the nation speaking on the topic. John has some insights now on Roger Revelle's scientific research and the effect that it had on Al Gore. John? Well, Revelle was a powerful man, a noteworthy scientist, and a significant force here in San Diego in the 1950s. There's no doubt that he's largely responsible for the high status of the Scripps Institute of Oceanography in its field and for locating the University of California at San Diego, at UCSD, at La Jolla. While serving as director of Scripps, Ravel and one of his researchers wrote the first modern scientific paper that linked carbon dioxide released in the air from the burning of fossil fuels and the greenhouse effect and the warming of temperatures. Well, this triggered an avalanche of research that eventually became the impetus behind the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change and the entire global warming movement. In the 1960s, Ravel moved to Harvard to establish a center for population studies. This is where Professor Ravel encountered student Albert Gore. He involved Gore and his classmates in the tabulating of data from a carbon dioxide study. Gore was so impressed, he wrote about it in his 1992 book, Earth in the Balance. That became the story for the movie, An Inconvenient Truth. The Oscar and the Nobel Peace Prize, and some people say $100 million, all came from that. There is no doubt Roger Revelle had a major impact on Vice President Gore's life. But there's a twist. In 1988, Roger Revelle was having second thoughts about whether carbon dioxide was a significant greenhouse gas. He wrote letters to two congressmen about it. And in 1991, he co-authored a report for the new science magazine Cosmos, in which he expressed his strong doubts about global warming and urged more research before any remedial action was taken. At that point, Mr. Gore pronounced Revelle senile and refused to debate global warming. He continues to refuse to debate. Many offers of thousands of dollars have been made for debate. He refuses. Today, Gore sequestered the media at this event, and he set forth rules, no questions, no interviews. I have learned that in 1991, Roger Revell made what was his final speech at the high-powered, very private summer enclave of powerful men and politicians at the Bohemian Grove in Northern California. There he apologized for his research, for sending so many people in the wrong direction on global warming, and he worried about the political fallout from the UNIPCC and Al Gore. A man named Don Michael Schmedman, who lives in the San Francisco area, was there that day. And he remembers the Ravel speech very well. He has told me about it in some detail. So think of the irony. Today, Al Gore received the first Roger Ravel Award, honoring the man who sent him on his global warming campaign. But Ravel had realized that it was a false alarm and that the science was flawed before he died. Ravel died of a heart attack in 1991. It would be interesting to know that if he had lived, would he be approving of the award that was given tonight? Or perhaps would he be joining me at the International Conference of Global Warming Skeptics in New York next week? If you want to read the article on global warming that I have written, you can go to KUSI.com, click on Coleman's Corner. Tell Paul, this is really Coleman. interesting. We haven't heard this information at all before. Well, I've done a lot of digging over the last year to uh, find all of this. And it really fascinated me when I stumbled across the Bohemian Grove speech. It's not documented anywhere. This is uh, the first time your orbits have crossed, you and Al Gore. They've, you're both in the same city for 24 hours, and we couldn't get the two of you to meet. Well, no, Mr. Gore, of course, is, was a former vice president. He's a man who got 52 million votes for president, served very honorably as a politician. I think he would have little regard for me. But you'd like to debate him, wouldn't you? Well, sure, I'd love to debate him, but you understand, this isn't political. I'm a journalist and a meteorologist. My interest is strictly in the science. Thank you, John. My next guest wants to sue Al Gore for fraud. He hopes a legal challenge will settle the global warming debate once and for all. He's John Coleman, and he founded the Weather Channel. My favorite channel has some of the hottest women there. And now he works as a weatherman for KUSI-TV in San Diego. He knows warm fronts like I know cold cuts. So, John, why do you want to sue Al Gore? 
Well, the deal is this, Greg. We have tried and tried and tried to get a debate on global warming mm -hmm. with scientists on the other side. Al Gore or any of the uh, scientists behind him over at the UN IPCC, we'd love to have a debate with them, but they say, oh no, the debate is over. Yeah. Well, now there are 30,000 of us. Mm -hmm. We have 30,000 scientists, 9,000 PhDs, who have signed up to debunk global warming. Mm -hmm. And uh, they still won't listen to us. You realize that Fox is the only cable network that will put us on the air. CNN won't. Uh, that other thing, MSNBC, yeah. it won't. Uh, CBS, ABC, NBC, they, they scoff at us. Mm -hmm. uh, we, are, uh, we, we can't get on the air. If it weren't for the Internet, you wouldn't even know I existed. Yeah, no, that's so, true. Uh, what? I, the, the whole deal is that somehow we have to be heard. So yeah. we figure maybe a court of law. Now, let me ask you, do you think, uh, why hasn't Al responded to you? Is he scared or is he just pretending you don't exist? Well, I think he regards us as just a little gnat. Mm -hmm. After all, he's a former Vice President of the United States. He's got an Oscar. He's got a Grammy. He's got a hundred million dollars. He's got a Nobel Peace Prize. Mm -hmm. I'm going to scare him? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> now, you say, you say in a lot of your writing that global warming is a scam. Uh, why do you think that? Well, if, if you study all the papers of the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, if you study everything their scientists have done, it all boils down to a claim that carbon dioxide, CO2 in the atmosphere, put there by our burning of fossil fuels, is going to tur turn the climate of Earth into an oven, and we're all going to bake and die. Mm -hmm. Well, that's sheer nonsense. We have burned burning fossil fuels for a hundred years. And what have we done so far? We might have raised the temperature by one-tenth of one degree, maybe. Uh, CO2 is a natural compound in the atmosphere. It's not a pollutant. No, it's Plants like, have to have it's it. It's like water vapor. Every time I breathe out, yeah. I create it. It is no big deal, and it's certainly not going to end the world. No, if you believed what the, what the, what the global warming freaks are saying, it's something so evil, but it's no different than basic water vapor. I mean, it's just a substance that's out there. But I've got to ask you, because there is so much science out there that's saying that this is purely hypothetical nonsense, why did it become such a widely held belief? Why is global warming so I don't know, easily embraced by people in Hollywood, by people in the media? Well, it's the most amazing part of the story, really. Uh, how did it become such this huge accepted scam? I mean, it started off with some environmentalists and some one-world politicians at the UN who had World Earth Day in 1970. Mm -hmm. And out of that, they finally managed to create this IPPC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change at the UN. They claimed, of course, that that was something, had something to do with science. All it was was an environmental advocacy group. Mm -hmm. Then Al Gore uh, learned a little bit about CO2 in college. One course learned a little. And all of a sudden, he became an expert. So. Uh, he becomes vice president, the UN starts voicing this thing on us, and the media, which loves a crisis, loves to tell us that the world is coming to an end, uh, the media jumped aboard, and once the media was aboard, so you got the UN, you got Al Gore, you got the media, what are the politicians going to do? They well, follow. What's interesting is almost with, with every board. issue, with almost every issue, you're allowed some kind of debate or dissent. And this is worse, actually, more, worse than any kind of religion where you're not allowed to dissent. You can't say anything without being called uh, an idiot or crazy. It's, been, it's become a religion. That's exactly what it's become, an environmentalist religion. Mm -hmm. And, of course, green and environmentalism is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. I'm an environmentalist, but you, wait a minute. You're not going to turn me into an extremist, and you're not going to get me to tell a lie to try to accomplish an environmental goal. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what they're doing. Speaking of goal, what does a hockey stick have to do with all this? <laughs> well, uh, this goes back to the start of it all. A, a professor at... Uh, an uh, American university named Michael Mann created a graph of temperatures through millennium flatlining and then shooting up at the end the shape of a hockey stick. And the UN panel said, ooh, love that. Yeah. And they kind of made it their Bible. <laughs> and it became the cornerstone of their whole campaign. Now it has been proved without a shadow of a doubt to be built on absolutely bad science. You can put any data into that formula, and it'll come out a hockey stick no matter what. Well, you know, John, uh, the whole thing was manipulated. John, I'm actually looking forward to the return of the Ice Age, because I know that's going to be the next catastrophe, probably in the next decade. we got to run. Thank you, John Coleman, founder of the, wedding, uh, the Weather Channel.